in Prolog, a pair is a compound term with principal functor dash and arity 2, for example, dash of x and y, which is simply a term with two arguments, x and y, written in functional notation. And because dash is also a predefined infix operator, we can equivalently write this in operator notation as x dash y, and that's exactly the same term. And such pairs are used in several places in the Prolog ISO standard. Most notably, the first argument of the standard predicate keysort must be a list of pairs, called key value pairs. And keysort, as the name suggests, sorts these pairs by their keys. For example, if we sort these pairs by their keys, then we get this list of pairs ls. And Prolog systems often provide many more built-in predicates for reasoning about pairs. So they often go well beyond of what the standard requires as the absolute minimum. And these predicates often adopt the naming convention from keysort. And they call the first argument of each pair the key, and the second argument the value of the pair. For example, let's take a look at library pairs of Scryer Prolog, which has a few useful predicates for reasoning about pairs, such as pairs keys values, which lets us relate a list of pairs to their respective keys and values. So procedurally speaking, we can use this to construct and also to deconstruct a list of pairs, depending on what we know and what we want to know about them. And as a specialization of this general relation, we have pairs keys, relating a list of pairs to their keys, and analogously pairs values for the values. And there's also group pairs by key, which works on a key sorted list of pairs and groups the values that have the same key. So um, let's try a few sample queries. First, we load the library, and then let's start with the most general query for pairs, keys, values, where we ask, are there any solutions whatsoever? So we ask, are there any pairs, which we could also call P's for short, or KV's for key value pairs, and any keys, K's, and any values, V's, for which this relation holds? And in response, we get longer and longer lists of pairs, keys, and values. So um, let's now post a more concrete query where more is known about the pairs. For example, let's ask, what are the keys and values of these pairs? And in response, Prolog tells us the keys of these pairs are the atoms A, B, and C. And the values in this example are the variables X, Y, and Z. And since this predicate is a true relation, we can also use it in other directions. For example, to answer questions like, what are the pairs P's? whose keys are a, b, and c, and whose values are the variables x, y, and z. So we're now turning this around and asking for the pairs in a case where the keys and values are known, or at least partially known, because each of the values is a variable in this case. And in response, we get an answer substitution for p's, the list of pairs, and also a redundant choice point. And if we look at the definition of pairs, keys, values, then it's easy to see why this happens, because in the mode in which we are now using this predicate, the first argument is a variable, and so it can't be used to distinguish the clauses. So in our example, the Prolog system would have to use the second or the third argument for indexing, and Scryer Prolog doesn't implement this, at least not yet, because there's of course hope that better indexing will be added in the future. So this is an implementation matter which is best improved in the engine. And we've now also seen a few useful variable names when reasoning about pairs. I mean, besides the obvious choices, pairs, keys, and values, there are P's, K's, and V's, and also KV's for key value pairs. And of course, also other abbreviations, which may make more sense depending on the concrete application and the meaning of the pairs. And also depending on the application, other functor names may also fit better. For instance, in a geometric context, point of X, Y could be a very descriptive and good choice. That's the term with functor point, arity 2, and its two arguments are x and y. So instead of dash, we simply use point here. Or as another example, slash of x and y could also make a lot of sense for coordinates. And since slash is also a predefined infix operator, we can also use operator notation for this term, just like for dash. Or as yet another example, equals of x and y could also be a good choice in some cases. That's simply a term with principal functor equals. And since equals is also a predefined infix operator, just like dash and slash, we can also write it in operator notation. 
And this representation is, for example, used in the variable names option of read term and write term. So it's not that every time a pairwise combination of terms occurs, we must use dash to denote this combination because we're, of course, completely free to use any functor we like. It's just that the notion of pair in the prolog ISO standard and also in prolog libraries and built-in predicates means terms with principal functor dash and two arguments. But as we see here, also the ISO standard uses a functor other than dash to denote, for example, equations. So just to make this clear, it's perfectly fine to use any other functor too. It's only that in the sense of the ISO standard, the type pair means specifically and only terms with principal functor dash in the arithmetic tool. And there's also one caveat I'd like to add here concerning the functor comma, because you may be tempted to use, for example, x comma y to denote a coordinate pair. And syntactically, the term is perfectly valid. It's a term with principal functor comma and arity two. This is sometimes called an end list because that's how end, that is conjunction, is written in clause bodies. So for instance, in this case, the body is a conjunction. It is a term with principal functor comma and arity two. And in this case, the first argument is the atom A, and the second argument is again such an end list, where the first argument is the atom B, and the second argument is the atom C. So, in a sense, we are used to this representation, and so it may be tempting to use it. However, using comma as a functor is not a good idea, because comma is already very overloaded in Prolog. Namely, it's used to first, as already mentioned, to denote conjunction, as in a comma b comma c in a rule body. Second, to separate list elements, as in a comma b comma c. And third, to separate arguments of terms and predicates, as in a comma b comma c. And therefore, it's true that you can use any functor you want. Yet it's also true that using comma as functor is a bad idea. And of course, one important motivation for using dash is that we benefit from the mentioned built-in predicates for pairs, such as key sort, pairs, keys, values, and so on. So in case of doubt, dash is certainly a good choice. And to repeat, only dash denotes pairs in the sense of the ISO standard. Now, what about triples, quadruples, quintuples, and so on? Well, a triple, for example, is naturally represented as triple of x, y, and z. That's a term with functor named triple and arity three. And of course, also in the case of triples, depending on the application, other functor names may fit better because they are more descriptive. For instance, in geometric applications, again, point of x, y, and z could be a good choice. That's a term with functor named point and three arguments. And even though it may at first be tempting, we don't represent the triple as x, dash y dash z. Why? That's because this is a pair. A pair where the first argument, that is the key, is a pair, and the second argument, that is the value, is the variable z. And we certainly also don't represent the triple as x, comma y, comma z, because that would combine the same structural problem, namely that it's an end list where one of the terms is itself an end list with the mentioned drawback that comma is already very overloaded. So we quickly forget these representations and instead note, for example, that a quadruple is naturally represented as a compound term with any fitting functor and rt4. And the same, of course, also holds for quintuples and so on. And of course, if there can be any number of elements, then a list is often a good fit. Which brings us to the question, why are we actually not always using a list? Or phrased differently, why do we bother with pairs at all? Right? I mean, why aren't we simply using a list with two elements to denote the pair x and y? Well, first of all, let's take a look at what such a list is, using write canonical to get the canonical representation of this term. So this is a term with principal functor dot. And of course, this must be represented in memory somehow. So to store this term, a prolog system would, for example, use one cell of its memory to store the term's functor, followed by another cell to store the first argument, which is the first element in the list, that is the variable x. And then store the second argument of the term, which in this case is another compound term with functor dot, 
and two arguments, a variable and the atom nil. So a straightforward representation of this term would take five cells in memory. Whereas for comparison, using a pair would typically only take three cells, one for the functor and two for the arguments. So there are good reasons for using pairs instead of lists, because pairs are more compact in memory and also easier to read and write than lists with two elements. And of course, the compactness argument is the least important, because it depends heavily on the prolog implementation. And in fact, a prolog implementation could perform so clever optimizations that a list with two elements is stored just as compactly as a pair. So the fact that pairs are easier to read and write is the compelling part of the argument. Because we always aim for readability and elegance of our code, and if the result isn't as efficient as we'd like, then it's first and foremost the prolog system that must be improved. 